and welcome to the Parenting Roundabout podcast for the week of October 23rd. I'm Catherine Aleko, and I'm here with Terry Morrow. Hello. For a weekly episode to talk about parenting in a roundabout way, along with a little pop culture and entertainment. Um, but first, Terry has to tell us <sighs> where she's been and what she's been up to. Yeah. If you noticed that we did not have a new episode last week, thank you for noticing. <laughs> and if you didn't notice, well, it's like we've never been gone. But <sighs> I was out taking a delightful stroll in the beautiful autumn weather with my husband and my dog. We're walking, talking, no problem at all. And all of a sudden, I had that terrible feeling that you know you're going down and there's nothing you can do about it. And time slows down while you anticipate the impact of your body against the sidewalk. And then sure enough, I hit. Uh, Originally, I thought I fell on my face. So when I sat up, I said to my husband, is my nose broken? Is there blood all over my face? But there wasn't. And then I noticed that my wrist hurt really quite a lot and also felt weird inside. And also my hand was sticking off at kind of an angle that didn't look right. Oh, so I sat there on the sidewalk cursing for a little while for which I have since gone to confession. And then (laughs) uh, a lady who we see from time to time walking her dog uh, came by and we were expressing sympathy. And I said, can Hannah come over and say hi to me? And I just buried my face in this soft dog and cried. My own dog was like in the back going, what happened? We were taking a walk and now we're stopping. What's going on? (laughs) Why are we still here? We're going the wrong direction here. But um, so I, you know, got up and we walked home and, you know, my knees were all scraped and bruised and my uh, one hand, left hand was bruised, but my right hand definitely something was not right. So as soon as we got back home, I said, you know what, I really think we need to go to City MD, which is the urgent care place by here that's affiliated with our doctors that we go to. So we went and, you know, my husband's like, oh, it's just strained. I bet it's just strained or bruised. It's probably fine. I'm like, it it doesn't feel fine. So we went. And, you know, you show it to the doctor and I'm thinking, oh, it's, you know, it's probably just strained. It's probably stupid that I'm here. I've, you know, do you do that too? It's like, I, I'm so mm-hmm. dumb that I'm even seeking help from you. I'm so sorry to be bothering you. Uh, and he's just sort of looking at it and not saying anything and saying, well, why don't we get an x-ray? And I'm like, oh, he's going to these old women come in here with their little brain. Oh, I hurt my wrist. So I was feeling <sighs> all stupid and they x-rayed it. And I went back in and the doctor brought in the x-rays and says, yep, you broke it. And I said, I did. And he said, oh, yeah, I could soon sell as soon as I saw it. And I'm like, well, why didn't you say so? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so I could have stopped doing my, oh, I'm so stupid, bit. But anyway, <laughs> so the like the it was it was fractured where the sort of where the arm bone come together with the wrist bones, the ends of the arm bones look, I think were fractured. And so two days later, I went to an orthopedist. And he also remarked that the, you know, wrist was off center, and which is not a good thing. And so that I had to have surgery. So the following Tuesday, which is a, let's see, what would that be two weeks ago now, as you're hearing Uh this? Something like that. Uh, I did indeed have the surgery. Please note that I went like 63 and a half years of my life with no surgeries. And then in this past year, I've had two. <laughs> my warranty has clearly run out. Mm-hmm. I told that to a couple of ladies in the Rosary Society. And they're like, oh, I went 70 some years before my first surgery. And oh, I was 82. <laughs> and I'm like, you guys are better stock than me. I'm yeah. I'm, I'm the thing you got at Target. In the <laughs> bottom row. Been... So... um Anyway, I had the surgery. Everything appears to have gone fine. I have to wait uh, two weeks to find out whether I have to keep wearing this cast or I can take it off. I'm very tired of wearing the cast. And uh, so by the time you're hearing this, I will know, but you will not because this will have been recorded before. So that's where I've been. It turns out having a broken wrist makes it kind of difficult to edit audio, as you will know if you listen to our last episode, (laughs) which was (laughs) longer and ummier than usual. And if you didn't you didn't notice a difference, please don't tell me. All right. <laughs> um, and, and this uh, one too will be... This one too, I will be still impaired as I edit it. So please will be bear minimally with us. edited. It will be minimally edited, yes. And I may use the, the less good sounding track that has both of our voices on it instead of, you know, acting like I know what I'm doing, splicing two tracks together. But um, I do not re- recommend falling and uh, breaking your wrist. Uh, I give Uh it zero stars and uh, everybody 
try to, we're just going to call this season autumn. I am not going to call it fall because <laughs> I don't even want to put that out there. Right. Let's all stay on our feet, shall we? Okay. Especially we, we ladies who no longer bounce, uh, but break of which there are actually the ladies on dancing with the stars this season, a uh, Mira, Mira might be getting into the age where she wants to not take a fall. Right. But uh, she's hanging in there so far. Maurizio and uh, Barry seem unconcerned. Mm -hmm. They heft women up and swing them around. Although Barry had had dropped them. He's like, he's like almost dropped Peter twice, hasn't he? Well, there was like this in the Disney night, um, (laughs) dance she uh, she was supposed to do a cartwheel and he was supposed to sort of assist and she did not do it so (laughs) uh, sort of unclear to me how whose fault that was or yeah you know whether whether we need to blame barry for that or not i don't (laughs) know i was reading a a message board about uh is that what we still call them or is that an old lady we call them but uh (laughs) An online forum where people were talking about Dancing with the Stars and somebody was saying, why are you asking a 69-year-old man to do lifts? Stop that. Yeah. Just let him just let him prance around and have a good time. Mm-hmm. Somebody's going to get hurt. Right. But uh, I watched both the Motown. The Motown night was the night I had my surgery and I got home and I thought, should I watch this live? And I just <laughs> couldn't focus on anything. So right. I watched it the next day on Hulu, which has no commercials, and thought, hey. this is key. So when Disney and I came around, it's like, shall I watch it tonight so I can vote for people? Or shall I watch it tomorrow when there's no commercials? And I watched it tomorrow. And fortunately, uh-huh. nobody I liked got sent home because of it. Uh-huh. But uh, Disney night was like, even without commercials, it was a Hyundai Ionique 5 Disney 100 yes. edition extravaganza. How many times could they work that stupid car into the episode? It certainly had built-in commercials, yes. Indeed. Oh, my gosh. Let's mm-hmm. have everybody pick them up at home. Oh, look at the baby and look at the mm-hmm. car. And here, we'll <laughs> drive here, we'll drive there. <laughs> yes. Much, even for Dancing with the Stars. Yeah. Uh, well, my... Lights on, I guess. On Motown night, which was the previous one, there were a lot of disturbing wigs. <laughs> and then on Disney night, we had... One person dressed as a broom, which yeah. is Emma. We had Barry and Peter, who were supposed to be dogs. Yeah. We had Allison dressed as a candlestick. <laughs> um, Adrian was supposed to be a Dumbo the elephant. Yeah. I mean, they really, some people got very, very literal costumes, is, is yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. The candlestick. Nope. Whoa. <laughs> I mean,. She's game for anything, but she is. She's like, give me a costume in which I cannot possibly be expected to dance. That's right. <laughs> they came right up with it. Pile my hair up about three feet, and then if you can again. even walk in this, you'll get a you'll get a good score. It'll be fine. Right. Oh well, she is very game, but she sure is. I think Sasha needs to step it up here a little bit. Yeah, and. uh it was interesting because uh, the Motown night when Jason did, I thought, really well. It was he, he got the first nines, but then somebody else, Ariana, got nines also. Yeah, and they did a jive. That was yeah. really good. That yeah, it was adorable. And it's like, uh-huh. he's almost like a ringer. Where does he have all this dance talent? He's he's almost too good for this point in the competition because there's going to be some, some uh, you know, people are going to expect too right. much of him. That's not right. a good thing. And then the following week, Disney week, he had the, the foxtrot and was so stiff. And, and I'm like, well, very smart. Let's reduce expectations so that right. when it counts. We can surge ahead with the really good. I think right. Daniela is, knows how this works and is going right. to calibrate as necessary. And, I mean, he didn't even score that low for that no, foxtrot. The scoring know, was very weird. Yeah. Because people, well. I mean, is it Lily or Lele? I think it's Lele. That was a perfectly fine dance. She looked mm-hmm. very good. She did yeah. She did just fine. And she was getting scores like, you know, Barry and Maurizio got who were, um, you know, posing nicely yeah. while people danced around them. So I don't right. understand. That doesn't seem right to me. So it may be that her, like, what was it? How many followers does she supposedly have? I so know. She has such a, a crushing social media following that they're lowering the scores just to 
keep her humble. I don't know. <laughs> I know. I, I threw her some votes because I was like, this isn't fair. That was she just needs- wrong. Yeah. So, but I, it's funny, both nights, I, I, as I said, I watched it the next day and my son's girlfriend, both nights posted on Facebook, shocking elimination. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it must be somebody that I really like. Somebody is really good. And both times I was like, that's not so shocking. I was right. I've been expecting them to go home. I've been shocked they're here that long. Yeah. Tyson and Adrian. Yeah. yeah. Tyson Adrian, for sure. Adrian, especially. I mean, I am not that clear on what the allegations are against him and how they're not. They're not good. Go read his Wikipedia page. I really like Brit and, but I was like, I can't, I can't vote for this person. Sorry. No, no. That's, (laughs) but I did go Googling if Brit and Daniel are still together and I believe they are. They are. So that's nice. (laughs) I wish them all the best and I hope it's real. It just Mm -hmm. has the feel of a showmance to me. It has a feel of an influencer relationship i don't know yeah i just i just yeah but it's none of my business and i hope they're very happy and i hope it's very real and speaking of showmances dancing with stars producers yo yo over here no showmance of riley who is 18 freaking years old stop yeah. it stop it stop it stop <laughs> absolutely oh my gosh yeah no no, no, no. <laughs> it's like, I see what you're doing. I see where you're going with this. I don't know how old he is, but she is too young to do a showmance. Stop it. Yeah. Don't even. Yep. Don't make me not vote for them because I don't make get me her come over there with yeah. my cast on my Stop arm. it. I mean, Love I realize you. that most of your dancers are married and parents now and that that cramps your showman style. <laughs> but don't use the teenagers. Do do not. Yeah, they really, with, with Sochi and Val, they're like emphasizing she's a teen, he's yes. an old guy. Yes. Like, yes. <laughs> he doesn't know the slang. You know, they're really <laughs> trying right. to like turn him into like this dad figure. Jenna is doing the scripting for Val on all, right. uh, all his young partners. Yes. Um, but yeah, she's adorable. So she is it so she, yes. is that how we say it? She's so very she. cute and very talented and obviously has dance experience and uh, right. good for her. Yeah. And uh, I always enjoy watching her. She could do well. Yeah. Still, I think Jason's still my fave. And Allison, just I hope she hangs on for as long as she possibly can because she's enjoyable. <laughs> yes. But not so much with the dancing for that one. There was, I think it was during the Disney night where they cut to her daughters. Yes. And they didn't get the memo that you sent out about <laughs> have your face, yes. <laughs> have your face arranged. At yeah. All times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not fair to expect that. Of them, no, but, it's not. Um, but, but they, no, they did. They were not there. <laughs> they can't. Yeah. I guess, I guess they have to, if it's live, they have to show whatever the camera lands on, but still, right. Sometimes it is uncharitable. Right. So, uh, dancing with the stars rolls along, yeah. just keeps rolling along. And next mm-hmm. week it will be, I believe it's most memorable year. Harry already used his story about his friend who liked to dance. And that's true. You know, we don't do that on Disney night, man. Don't bring us down on Disney night. Right. Save it. Yeah. I, be- I believe it's going to be most memorable okay. year and to include a um, tribute to Len Goodman. That's right. With, well. with a whole bunch of people that people who are watching the show now have no idea who they are. <laughs> right. <laughs> All Some the old pros, pros coming on back. Uh-huh. That would be interesting. That should be fun and enjoyable. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I wonder if Mira's most memorable be, memorable year will be the one in which she became an Oscar-winning actress. <laughs> yeah, we could go through and predict. <laughs> 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 so, so, poor Soshi has, like, the least to work with. It's like, well, I, you know, yeah. Her <laughs> I went Harry. to the prom. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's she's had movies well, she's probably she's, had personal distress of she's some been on in marvel movies i yes. guess it'll come from that yes she is so cute yes enjoy her very much mm-hmm. and okay so uh in addition to uh these two uh 
weeks of Dancing with the Stars that have piled up during my incapacitation. We also <laughs> watched the movie Champions, which stars Woody Harrelson as a basketball uh, coach who is forced to do community service coaching a Special Olympics basketball team. All the athletes on the team are played by actors with intellectual disabilities. And every second of the movie that involved them, I adored. Uh, mm -hmm. They were just so fun and they were, did such a great job. And you could have just dispensed with the plot and had them acting for two hours and I would have been a happy camper. Mm -hmm. The plot itself was sort of like paint by numbers. I mean, mm -hmm. oh, I've yeah. seen this before um, right. a million times. And Caitlin Olson, who I don't think I've ever seen before. I never watched, um, oh, what's the show she's in? It's Always Sunny, it's always in, sunny Philadelphia. in Philadelphia. Never mm -hmm. watched that. She did fantastic with a part that was like not even written. It was just yeah. girl here. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, she she made it work. She had a very specific uh -huh. job that she had to do and she did it and she made it work. And I enjoyed her very much and will now be looking out for her and stuff because she was great. Uh, Woody Harrelson yeah. was fine, but it's just everything but those young actors was stuff you've seen 5,000 times before. Right. And I am deeply puzzled by the depiction of Special Olympics. <laughs> We don't have team basketball here. Maybe they have team basketball somewhere. If we did have team basketball, it wouldn't be over the course of weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. You wouldn't be taking a public bus. You wouldn't even be taking, I mean, you would be going to places nearby and your parents would drive you there is pretty much the way it works. We do every right. now and then the city pays for a bus, but not for just individual events. Uh, why did the was the gold medal game in Winnipeg? Right outside of the United States of America, <laughs> I'm pretty sure we have uh, state championships. We've gone to those, and then there is a U.S. thing that you can go to that you get might get picked to go to, and then there's a mm -hmm. world thing. I don't think there is a North America thing, but uh, certainly not at the level of you play a bunch of games and in the end you get a gold medal. Would you be going to another country? Right. Which would, by the way, involve all these guys getting passports. I know that was. I was like, your your extortion from the restaurant owner did that also cover getting everyone a passport because that is time and money. Oh you know? yes, absolutely. Yeah, so it's like nobody was paying attention to the story here. No, it, it makes did, no yeah. sense at all. Why was why was the mother never at the games? Just the sister. I go to a lot of Special Olympics. The parents go to the stuff. They, right. Their their mom would be in the bleachers screaming, right? For sure. Uh, it's it just was, and no, none of the other kids seem to have any family involvement whatsoever. Yeah, I was wondering if that was just sort of part of the, you know, that's why they had to take the bus, and you know, I guess. Like, but that, I mean, I could see because I mean, like the the one. A bunch of them lived in a group home yes. and, you know, they were out working and... In which case, you know. the group home would have bussed them places. Mm -hmm. I know the people... Let's see. We have my uh, my son's Special Olympic team. There are people who live in a group home and they always come with an attendant and they come on a bus. And it just... It doesn't... See, any of it doesn't seem like the way this stuff works. Right. In any capacity whatsoever. As long as I'm watching those guys having fun and that and, and one one woman, <laughs> as long as I watch the team having fun, I don't care. Right. You can it's overlook all during that the stuff. the oh yes, now we must have interlude, you know, romantic interlude, let's see, family interlude, let's see, what's his job gonna be interlude. During right. those interludes I have to stop and say, Well now, wait a minute. What? <laughs> did did the kid at the restaurant not have a job coach? Did and if not, how did he get that job? And if if his mother got him that job, why isn't she down there kicking the ass of the of the restaurant owner who's not nice? Right. Uh, I don't know. It's just it's like they were sort of in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. My experience of disability is that there is no vacuum. You have so many people having an opinion on stuff. You cannot right. turn around without bumping into somebody. Right. So. But it makes a much better, much more fun movie this way. It's just sort of like the bad news bears, except we're 
plugging in people with disabilities. It's yeah. And we're not asking questions about anything else. So, um, yay for that cast. I would love to see them in other things. A few of them yeah. have credits. Uh, one, I think the kid who worked at the restaurant was just a special Olympics athlete that they, you know, they recruited. recruited. Mm -hmm. So I think that oh, was the case well, for a few of them. He did a great job. Yeah. They were wonderful. Uh, and, and so fun to have not typical actors portraying them, but right. them. So yay for representation. Mm -hmm. Yay for hopefully getting some careers started. And, uh, you know, yay for the people who made this movie to make those things happen. They right. could have maybe, like, I don't know, written a script, but, um, you know. <laughs> Terry, you I know, sometimes everything. you're asking for a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. just, just, I want to give Caitlin Olsen a hug. Because <laughs> it's like, <laughs> she did so great with absolutely nothing. Yeah. Very, very little. Her uh, sarcastic charisma just carried her right through. My husband watches It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Uh -huh. So he, you know, when I turned this on, he was sort of not paying that much attention. Uh -huh. But then when he realized like, oh, that's her, that's Caitlin yeah. Olsen, then he paid a little bit more attention and he ended up, you know, he ended up watching yeah. most of the movie and enjoying it, you know, just enjoying it for what it is. You know, you're yes. not, you're not getting <laughs> groundbreaking, you know, the only groundbreaking thing is that the people with intellectual yes. disabilities are playing themselves and yes. that, you know, they are fairly centered in the story, except yes. not yes. quite as centered as Woody Harrelson. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they could have been more centered. Yes, they could have um, for sure. I would have liked to have, you know, had a scene in the group home, which mm -hmm. would have, by the way, had like a worker involved. Yeah. Uh, and I would have liked to have seen scenes without any of the, you know, I, there seems like there was a lot of things that they could have done that would have been more interesting than what they did. But, uh -huh. you know, baby steps, I guess. Yes. So, but glad I watched it. I was going to watch it with my husband because he's a Special Olympics coach and uh, would have been interested in that aspect of it. But I, I thought I'd get it queued up. So I was watching the beginning of it and the, uh, you know, rated for language sticker came up and I thought, oh, it's not. <laughs> He's going to have a problem with that. Huh? Yeah. So I spared him. Yeah. But I might. I might have him watch it. He might enjoy the parts with the athletes. Right. And, well, uh, and as I think I mentioned to you, uh, a friend of ours who has intellectual disabilities at mentioned this movie to me that he liked it yeah. um he, he's also a big fan of deadpool so uh. <laughs> <laughs> language does not bother him right that would be helpful so next let's talk about what oh, yes. we're going to do next yes. which is dancing with the stars most memorable year mm -hmm. and then gilded age is back uh. So we're going to enjoy scheming and, um, you know, great ballrooms and gowns and yes. all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. We've uh, watched Mer Meryl Streep in something, and now we will watch her daughter. That's Assuming right. she's still in it. Her, yeah, I think she is. Yeah, her she's in the poster. And, right. <laughs> Cynthia Nixon, Christine Baranski, lots yep. of – and uh, every Broadway actor on yes. New York. <laughs> In New York, so. It was fun the first time through, so we'll see how it goes this time. That's right. And it's coming out Sunday the 29th um, on Max, I guess we're calling yes. it now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been on it since it changed and it's asking me for all sorts of things, so I'm going to have to. Oh, boy. I have some time to, I have a week to figure out how to watch it. <laughs> right. <laughs> So moving on from uh, visual entertainment to uh, print entertainment, what do we have for Catherine's Library Find of the Week? Well, I'll tell you, Terry. Yeah? One thing I've learned in this job is yes. that a great way to get a child's attention is to talk about butts, uh -huh. underwear, yes. farts. All that kind of stuff. Yes, in my house um, also. So. <laughs> so this book I'm bringing to you today is called The Big Bang and Other Farts, A Blast <laughs> Through the Past. 
Um, and I'll just read, let me just read you a little bit of okay. the, the flap copy. Uh-huh. Um, one day, Daddy Rat sits his baby rats down to watch a very serious documentary about some of the most important moments in history. Sounds boring, right? <laughs> However, the babies are delighted and surprised when the documentary shows that the reason for life in the universe isn't the Big Bang, but... The big fart. Ah. <laughs> it turns out every single major historical event was caused by, you guessed it, a fart. The wow. extinction Who of knew? the dinosaurs, the end of the Ice Age, even the secret behind the Mona Lisa smile can wow. all be traced to the passing of gas. So there you go. <laughs> so this joins um, some other, you know... Part, some other entries in the canon, such as No One Likes a Fart, ah. which is, uh, you know, like an anthropomorphized fart. Mm-hmm. Um, Aww. To, I know. It's very sad. It does. <laughs> put a face on it. I know. And, yep. and people like and little, it. Little, like, you know, sort of brownish yellow cloud with, oh, dear. <laughs> with a face. Well, it sounds like the kids in the first book like to fart, so maybe they he needs to go hang there. They they at least enjoyed, you know, being watching a documentary about farts. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> so check the. I will have links to those, of course. And I can't remember if I ever mentioned here in this space another one I've come across called "butt or face." <laughs> Does that sound familiar? <laughs> It's pictures of animals, closed up pictures of butts and faces, and you have to try to tell the difference. <laughs> These are the kind of books I would have looked for for my son back in the day. Yeah. My reluctant reader. Right? That would have done it. He would have dug that. I think there may be, we may have had similar bodily function related books. Right. That stuff's always guaranteed to, uh, I mean, to get the kiddo to sit and look at a book. But it's about mm-hmm. farts. Join me. Let's <laughs> let's read. No. You can make fart noises. It'll be fun. Uh, well, I thank the authors who do the do the thankless tasks of dragging in reluctant readers with, with farts. bodily humor. Yes. You, you do us all a service. That's and we right. thank you. But I have to think they are enjoying themselves. <laughs> I would think so too. Is uh, the the pretty soon the the fart that nobody want nobody likes is going to have like a little sister that's a burp and then they can have uh, you know yes. a little dirty diaper on two feet walking around behind them. <laughs> oh. Just an endless list of possibilities, uh-huh. and as long as it's not scratch and sniff, that's just fine. <laughs> that's right. Well, on that note. <laughs> Join us on a spin through the archives that does not involve any farts. No Don't worry farts. about it. It really played very little role in the progress of our podcast. <laughs> in our case, it would have to be a book about a little um that walks around and says, People keep cutting me out. I just have something to say. Oh, I just want to they? say um. <laughs> I know just the shape of it, too. I have a t shirt with the shape, audio shape of an um. All right. So we are going to see what we were talking about three years ago, four years ago, and six years ago this week. So back in 2020, we talked about what moms of teens need. We were imagining a a teen shower the same way you would have a baby shower, but then you would give the mother of the new teen all the things that they would need for that period, like uh, deodorizing things and... uh, (laughs) earplugs and uh friends right <laughs> like good friends to help her through <laughs> things to read in carpool line so i wonder what would we do now to update this what do moms of young adults and not so young adults need right he was going to give me a party when my youngest kid turned 30 <laughs> what would i get I mean, it does it does change depending on whether your child is in your home or this not. This is true. Yes. You, as an empty nester, what should people be giving you? Right. Because, I mean, I need, like, the gas card to go and visit them. Or oh, yeah. Or to give, give them to come visit me. Um, I need, like... <laughs> 
my husband needs like how to cook for two people, <laughs> you know, because yeah. he's, he's unable to adjust, um, you know, and as we've talked about, it, it's, it's all or nothing with him. You know, you're, yeah. you're either getting like something extremely involved and gourmet and, and involving every pot and pan and utensil, or you're getting like, you know, something he picked up pre-made at the grocery store. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah. So, and he's not a leftover eater. That's the thing. Like, I will eat leftovers partly out of guilt, but partly because mm -hmm. like, hey, it's still good. Yeah. Um, and he tends to not eat leftovers and just create more and more food. Oh. So, you know, this is a more of a him problem than a me problem. Yeah, it sounds but. like. <laughs> what you need is a bunch of friends to come over for dinner. Yeah. Yeah. Then that would require him to be, you know, a social person. Oh, that's well. true. <laughs> yeah. It's complicated. So, yes. <laughs> but yeah, I don't like, you know, there's, there's the gas cards. There's just like the time in the day to stay in touch and, you know, yeah. be talking like literally, um, since we've been sitting here, both of my children have called me. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, after we're done, I'm going to need to call them back. And yeah. I also have like work, work to do. And uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh. yeah, you would think that you'll, once your kids move out, you'll have all this time and instead you just other things suck it up. Yeah. And you don't have those little, like, there's, it, it, there's more like, it's a dedicated, you know, 20 minute conversation versus like, yeah, multiple shorter ones right. throughout the day. Yes. Yeah. You have to make a count. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One, what one unusual, uh, mom of an adult thing, um, my my daughter is finally moving down to the apartment. I don't know if I said this already. She's finally moving down there. She started sleeping down there. Okay. And she wouldn't do that unless we had a baby monitor. Mm -hmm. So I ordered the cheapest baby monitor on Amazon that would come that day because I wasn't going to mm -hmm. mess around. If she was ready to right. do it. <laughs> We're uh, not and, delaying And this so at all. apparently something you need is the mom of a, a young adult sometimes is a baby monitor. A baby monitor. In her room. So that if she's, she's, she has this thing where she wakes up sometimes, yeah, you know, and is screaming or thrashing a little bit. And I think the reason she finally decided to move downstairs is she fell out of her little twin bed. And she says, oh. I want a bigger bed. And there's a bigger bed downstairs. So... Uh -huh. Oh, uh, so now if, if I'm sitting by the TV and I hear her through the baby monitor screaming, I could say, are you okay? And she'll say, yeah. And, uh, -huh. uh it's interesting because I'm like be sitting there and you can hear when the dog goes down to visit her. So I'll just be listening. It'll be silent. And all of a sudden you'll hear the click, 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 <laughs> click, 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 click <laughs> of the nails on the, on the tile. Right. And then sometimes you'll hear it just click, click, click right back. Yeah. She's still there. And then she goes, mm -hmm. the dog is very confused though, because- one person has sweet this thing that on her she's wrist and is sitting on the couch all the time, and the other person has just changed bedrooms for no apparent reason. <laughs> and uh, now she, she has to watch over two floors and not just yes. one. It's so unfair. Yes. But but since we're talking about sh showery type things, let me ask: if you move from your single bedroom in your mother's house to a series of rooms in your mother's house, do you get a housewarming party? <laughs> Could I throw her on housewarming for her little little tiny apartment down there? Yeah, because it is for her a big a big move. It's a and big she move. Could yeah. use some dishes, honestly, uh -huh. and it would be fun for her to entertain. On the other hand, she really has moved. She really is still living in her parents' yeah. house. You know, right. it's, like, <laughs> it's not even a proper apartment. It's a mother in law apartment. It's right. It's just. A different room in the house. So th I feel like that may be a little, people might be annoyed by that. Might be too much to, might be too to much. ask. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a house warming. It's not an apartment warming. It's a different floor warming. Right. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Never mind. 
Uh, the uh, another thing we talked about this week in 2019, uh-huh. we did a parenting would you rather. That's right. So, for example, would you rather your child be very responsible but also a slob or neat and tidy but forget to do homework, runs late, etc.? We chatted about that. We chatted. I about- think we all decided that we would like the the slobs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Responsibility is important. Yes. And we talked about, would you rather live with your kids when the cable TV is out or the internet is out? And And that has now become indistinguishable from... Yes. Like at one time that was two different problems, but now it is... Now it's all one problem. <laughs> yeah. That's why my my cable and my internet is the same provider, but I still have a different provider for my uh, cell phone. Yeah. And uh, our cable place keeps saying, come on, come on, we'll give you money back if you uh, get your cell phone with us. Come on over. And I'm like, nope, 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 not no, putting all those eggs in one basket. That. My oh, cell phone no. is the only thing that keeps me on the internet when you people break down. Right. Nope, nope, nope. But, That's uh, right. Uh, another one we talked about was, would you uh, move a sleeping baby or stay up all night with a fussy baby? Or would you rather? Yeah. Uh, which and is I, and that I really never had that much to do with, but you guys had it. And I, I said, definitely move the sleeping baby because there's a chance yeah. that the baby will stay asleep or go back to sleep. But if, if, you, if you're if you saying the alternative is that they're up all night, yeah, for sure, I'm going to at least try. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, to, for, for our state of uh, being now, we thought we would uh-huh. ask, would you rather your child solve their own problems without telling you or tell you, but then you have to do the solving? This is and so hard. It's hard because how do you know they're solving them right if they're not telling you? <laughs> That's right. If you knew your child was smart and capable and would just get it done, then I guess I would rather have that. But how well would I ever, ever know that? And also, I would just feel guilty that like they felt like they couldn't ask for help or didn't want to ask for help or, you know, like. Yeah. Yeah. When they have a problem, I would, I'm, that's what I'm here for. You know, right. like I'm, I want to help you. I don't necessarily want to solve it for you, um, <laughs> but I could be consulted. <laughs> yes. Yes. What we would like is for them to solve it and then tell us what they did and have us approve it. Right. But I, we have had very bad luck with kids just solving their own problems. It's like, mm-hmm. no, we, we need to <laughs> come tell us first. Tell us your plan. Let us approve it. If we don't right. see the stamp, you're in trouble. But, <laughs> but, yeah, my son doesn't tell me stuff at all. And my daughter, when she hasn't told me stuff, it has made bad, bad decisions. It's been a problem, yeah. So I have, I have the worst of both of those things. <laughs> right. They don't tell me and then they don't solve them. Yeah. But that I'm so wasn't... low key and relaxed and nice and I never go crazy about stuff. Why wouldn't they want to talk to me? I can't right. imagine. Sit down and, and let's talk and about And all this you for have to do is, is sit on the couch and deal with their, <laughs> That's listen right. to their problems right, right. now. And, you know, I'm limited in my ability to escape, so <laughs> I can't, I guess I could hit somebody with my cast, but. Right. Yeah, you could. Light. Not going to do too much damage. <laughs> okay. So our third one was in 2017, we talked about beyond valedictorians. What was that about? We're thinking that we needed to, to uh, celebrate more. Right. It was, you know, artist. exactly. Like we're giving these, I don't, and I have no idea why this came up in October. <laughs> it seems like an end of the school year thing, but we uh-huh. were, we were discussing how, you know, uh, kids are rewarded for their grades and, and, you know, I mean, maybe also like their athletic prowess or whatever. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there's lots of other things that maybe right. um, we should be celebrating. And it just reminded me of to the movie Champions because mm-hmm. there's this whole big, you know, rousing locker room speech yes. about, you know. Well, there's there's a couple locker room speeches. One is from the young woman who's on uh-huh. the team yeah, <laughs> who's about two feet shorter than everybody else. 
Um, but I also don't has... get that because all the teams seem to be male and our teams are all co-ed, but I right. don't know why there would be just all guys and one girl, but you know, she was, she was delightful. So yeah, she was. And she, she gave a, a speech about like, we're not playing for the coach. We're playing mm-hmm. for each other. Yeah. Um, which was lovely. And then lovely message, you know, delivered uh-huh. in a. <laughs> Very straightforward <laughs> way. Yes. But then there was, um, you know, the other one was about the coach pointing out to them all the ways that they have been brave and yes. they have been champions already in their lives. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that went along with this, right. I thought. Yes, that's so. true. Yeah, it's hard to know how to recognize things because you don't want to be... I don't know. You don't want to be seeming like you're, well, let's find something we can celebrate about yeah. you who has right. nothing normal to celebrate. Right. Um, and it's, you know, there's a lot of, often a lot of things on social media of celebrating things of people with disabilities that feel a little condescending. Right. But at the same time, it's nice to be celebrated, you know, if nobody's going to uh-huh. celebrate you otherwise. Yeah. You know, I might take that. Um, I know there was, we always had, was it Nicole always had an objection to the attendance uh, award at the end of the school year? Yes. There's kids who that's showing up is the best they've done. And so maybe we give them a pat on the head for that. Right. That's perseverance is worth something, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) I didn't get good grades, but I showed up every day. Darn it. It might have taken quite a lot to be, yes. you know, to get yes. there every day. Yes, exactly. So. And to yeah. just keep hanging in. Right. Um, but then, you know, people complain about participation trophies, and I, I have 500 Special Olympics medals <laughs> hanging around my house that my kids could care less about. They don't right. mean anything to them because they get them all the time. Right. Um, so it's that's a difficult subject, really, uh-huh. celebrating different things. Right. There, there well, needs I, to I be think, a good system for it. There need to be like defined things to shoot for. And then you, yeah. you, you celebrate people getting it, which is what the valedictorian thing is to some degree. Right. Well, and I remember you, well, at one of the Special Olympics, you talked about how um, your son was really looking out for his roommate and teammate. Yeah. And how, you know, you were so proud of that rightfully right. so like yes. um yeah but that it's really hard to quantify and it and is praise the, a kid for a person for like yeah and he also it's, didn't he was doing the right thing yeah. <laughs> you know he wasn't doing it to get a medal in in good sportsmanship he was right. just doing it because for his friend and my daughter at that same one was very gracious in a mix-up of the scoring and stuff. And that's nice, too. So yeah. I don't know. It's yeah. just appreciate kids all the time for everything that they do. There you go. Let's do that. <laughs> I don't think we need to formalize it necessarily. Right. But yeah. uh, let's give ourselves an award for finishing this podcast. That's right. We will. Less than 45 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Although maybe not by the time you're done talking. I'll go, I'll, I'll speed through it. That's it for the the outro music. (laughs) That's it for the parenting roundabout weekly roundup. You can find all our episodes on Spreaker, Apple podcasts, Amazon music, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can find recaps, links, and an opportunity to comment on our website at parentingroundabout.com. You can also talk to us on our Facebook page, Instagram, or Twitter, where you'll find us at roundabout chat. And you can visit our Amazon shop at amazon.com slash shop slash mamatude, where you can find links to a lot of the things we've talked about. We'll see you back here next Tuesday. Yeah. Barring any broken again. bones. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Terry. Bye, Catherine. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>